Good morning, Minecrafters. I have a confession to make. Before we get into the video, I have to explain. The first time I tried recording this episode, the bitrate in OBS was set way too low. So the video, it came out really bad and looked like absolute poop. There's no other way to no no other way to say that. It looked like poop. So I sped it up, put it in a time lapse, did a voiceover, and that way I can still use the footage. You guys still get to see me bop the dragon. It was super easy. Uh, you know, I hit the water bucket clutch like a professional Minecraft player does. And then I came home and continued to rule the world. It was super cool. I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And in this episode, we're going to be building a wool farm that's automatically sorted into its own individual color with a special add-on for white wool. With the Auto Crafter being introduced in this update, it makes this add-on completely possible. And it's probably my favorite way to get white wool now um, i really like it but you'll have to stick around to the end of the episode to see that we also built a mob farm we built a trading hall and we even built a house and if you guys have come to the live stream world you guys know you guys are already aware that i don't build houses i'm approaching day 1000 in my live stream world and i'm still sleeping outside we're changing that in this world though no longer will I sleep outside. No longer will I be homeless. I also have dogs. Okay, enjoy the episode. Bye. Our adventure today begins in the nether by engaging a local elitist in the deadliest game of pickleball known to man. After embracing a humble victory, I then moved on to gathering some quartz for a mob farm I'm building and decided to boost the local economy, taking notes for whenever I start my own. Afterwards, I encountered a local hunting party that was seemingly struggling with a rather foul looking beast. So I offered my services, and together we were able to overcome its strength. For which, they showed their gratitude by performing a rarely seen traditional song and dance. A little while later, I came across a fortress where I collected some of the native vegetation, hoping that I don't get flagged by customs. Ah! They found out! After handling customs, I stumbled into an HOA board meeting. I told them that they all sucked, and then I proceeded to ransack their office. I don't even live in their neighborhood, I just really don't want them to live there either. And after having my fun in debauchery and liberating the locals, I figured it was time for me to head back to my own home and tend to my responsibilities. I needed to get this mob farm done so that I could carry on enchanting my gear. Once I had finished the mob farm, I then spent the next 5 or 6 hours gathering XP and repeatedly re-rolling the enchanting table in an effort to get all of my favorite enchantments on all of my gear. When I was done with that, I decided that it was time to make myself known as the one true ruler of this world. So I revisited the friends I'd made in the nether, and further boosted their economy. And in return, they gave me the only thing that I was missing to make that happen. Ender lady balls. Seriously? There was literally zero eyes in this portal. What happened after entering the portal was a pretty typical ender dragon fight. I destroyed the crystals and then tried talking to the dragon about the ethics and morals of being a kind and humble ruler. To which she responded in the way most women do, by giving me an ultimatum to either see things her way or die trying to change her mind, and then asked me who I even was. To which I responded, I am you, but stronger. Alright, welcome back gamers. I hope you guys enjoyed that little time lapse. Once again, I apologize. I goofed and recorded the entire episode. Well, it's supposed to be the entire episode in way too low of a bit rate and it was just super low quality and i didn't want to do that to you guys so i just kind of sped it up and took a couple days to figure out what the actual episode is gonna be and i think i figured it out today we're gonna get rid of this primitive and real icky sugarcane farm we're gonna make a fully automatic one right here in the spawn chunks so it will constantly work um a little bit of a recap i after i beat the dragon i did do a little bit of exploration and i found a new place that i want to put my base um so hopefully this episode we get moved out of the outdoors and into the indoors hopefully this episode or the next will definitely be moving into our new house uh, but let's go check out the spot that I chose for my base. Right there's the villager breeder. 
this little mountain right here is where I think I'm going to call home. I've already got a little bit of a foundation set. It's going to be a typical like fantasy slash Viking style home. I really like those. It's going to be like uh, this. I really like the feel of those like Viking cottages. Uh, I did make it a little bit wider than it usually is. So I hope it works out. If not, we'll have to just like cut that side off this over here is going to be like a guard tower slash like hut i don't know i don't know if it's going to be a tower or a full tower or if it's just going to be a hut but it's going to house my entire my final enchantment setup i have a really cool idea that i've been wanting to play around with for a while that's why i've been collecting all of the crying obsidian um, I'm also going to need to find a lush cave, which there's actually one right there. So we need a lush cave for the spores. I think that's going to be really cool. I love the particle effect. Um, but other than that, most of the episode that I had originally recorded ended up just being me sitting up here at the mob farm and re-rolling the enchantment table. So I'm kind of glad I get a little bit, I get to get a little bit more um, actual content squeezed into this episode. I wasn't really happy with spending six hours re-rolling an enchantment table. That really sucked. Moving on to the sugarcane farm. Um, I think the first thing we need to do is find some mud i like using mud in sugarcane and bamboo farms um so let me empty out this the reason i like using mud is because mud is just slightly smaller than a full block and therefore item collection is made a lot easier so the items get collected a lot easier and there's less loss when you use mud um and yeah so with the fully automatic sugarcane farm paper crafter um i less item loss is very important right because it's going to be in the spawn chunks so even when i'm up here building it's going to be down there making paper for me we need we need as little loss as possible Anyways, that's why we're going with the mud. I don't know if that's actually true, but that's what I feel like. So I'm going with mud. And since I need a bunch, I'm not just going to take dirt and pour water on it. I'm going to try to go find a mangrove swamp. I'm, I think there's one this way. I don't know. I was flying around a little bit and I saw what I thought was a mangrove tree in the distance. Um, kind of this direction. So, yeah, we need the sentry armor trim, and we got it. Oh, that's a lot. Ugh. Whoa, but hey, a cave. Did I pick up the bad omen? I did. All right. Well, I got what I wanted. What is that? Oh. Uh, oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, the mangrove. Oh my god, these are the most annoying trees in the entire game. Why am I lagging so bad right now? Well, I was going to show collecting mangrove and collecting some mud, but since the game is so laggy, I think I'm just going to do it and then uh, meet you guys back at the base. All right, and we're back. We got a couple mods downloaded. We I saw that fabric updated finally to 121, so I installed sodium and lithium, and now... We're getting a solid FPS. Not super great. I don't have that great of a PC. Um, and my monitor is only 75 hertz. So I have my FPS capped to 70 anyway. But now we're getting that and we're good. I'm not seeing any lag. 
or anything like that. We did find a mangrove swamp um, where I got a bunch of mud, but that's when the lag started happening really bad. So I didn't stay there long enough to get a bunch of mangrove woods, uh, but I did get the propagules. So we can just grow our own on demand as we need it. All right. My plan for the automatic sugar canerator is very simple, actually. I'm gonna put it, I'm just gonna put it right here. We're gonna do it in layers, right? It's gonna be stacked probably like four, four or five layers high. Um, underneath, there's gonna be some minecart picker upper action going on, and it's gonna deposit it into an auto crafter that's gonna automatically craft it into paper, theoretically. On paper, this will work, um, but I haven't really played around with the auto crafter a whole lot, so I'm not 100% sure. So let's just tackle this how I tackle everything I'm not sure about and just get started. All right, so now that we got this whole area filled in, now we need to build the collection system and auto crafting system. That has to be the first thing we do because it's at the end. And it's a lot easier to do that first than if we were to try and do it, build the farm and then incorporate the auto crafting. I think, I think building the collection system and the auto crafting circuit is a lot easier. So step one, how do you build a freaking auto crafter? I literally haven't even looked at that in the crafting table so i have no idea crafter what what the fuck it takes a dropper right or a dispenser is it a dropper or a dispenser let's make a dropper first ah, there it is i needed the dropper let's go guys we have our first auto crafter of the world. Such a beautiful thing. Anyways, let's do this. Uh, let's try putting a block there. Another comparator. Let's put that into subtract mode. Composter there. We're going to fill this up so it gives off a signal of eight. And then some redstone dust and a repeater. Okay, so if I put this third sugar cane in here, it should automatically craft it. There we go. It worked. Now let's just try that again. And again. And again. And again. Oh my god, it works. All right. So we were missing this block right here. This block right here is what was prohibiting us from being able to actually do it. So basically the sugarcane farm is going to be happening right here. The Minecraft picker upper or the minecart picker upper is going to be over here, dropping it off in the auto craftinator and into the storage. Okay. We got ba the basic minecart picker upper track laid out. Um, basically there's going to be a mud layer all the way across. Um, or I might actually do like path blocks, like mud where the sugarcane grows and then path blocks on top, like in the middle where everything gets pushed into. Um, and the minecart hoppers should be able to pick up anything that drops on the mud blocks or on the path blocks. So it's going to do two cycles. It's going to cycle the sugarcane farm twice each time. And then it's going to come up here put a little bit in the hopper and then blah blah do it all over again um i know there's a way to get this to pause on the hopper and then go back when it's empty but i don't know how to do that yet so i'm not gonna worry about it honestly i'm gonna get the meat and potatoes of this farm built real quick and then i'll show you guys what's going on with it Okay, so this is the basic design that I was able to come up with. Um, the water's going to go right here. Sugarcane's going to go right here. These are going to be path blocks. 
And then the pistons and observers are going to be stacked on top of the water, like where the water is. Um, we're going to go three high and then do another layer and then three high and then do another layer. We might just build two layers today. Um, it's going to be in the spawn chunks. So, like, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with efficiency. I don't think efficiency is going to be a problem with this because it's in the spawn chunks. Okay, so we need 10 more. There's 20 pistons on each side. We need 10 more. Let's cover that up so nothing gets stuck in the water. So simple, you guys know how automatic sugarcane farms work. Basically, sugarcane gets planted in the mud, it grows, the observer sees it, triggers the pistons, and boom. The path blocks in the middle are here to aid item pickup. Sometimes it goes further than a block. So the minecart hopper will pick up below it'll pick up the items through the path blocks as well really simple really easy okay now we just grab a hopper make our hopper mine cart damn it i still need it to pause on the hopper okay I think I may have it figured out. Okay, so comparator goes into there with a solid block here. Redstone torch, repeater, solid block, solid block. And then if we drop this sugarcane into this hopper, we should see the powered rail turn off for a second and it does cool so let's put our minecart back on it okay let's drop all of those wait for them to get scooped up and there they go here comes the minecart and it should pause oh that's beautiful and then once it's empty, oh my god, we did it. We figured it out. This is probably the ugliest build I've ever seen, but we're going to build something nice around it. We're going to try to anyways. I've been sitting here waiting for that one piece of sugar cane to grow and set off the observer so I can observe how well this thing works. And it doesn't, it's not growing. I've been here for like 10, 20 minutes. Crazy. That's stupid. All right. And we just finished the sugarcane farm. It took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted to use for the roof. I went with tough bricks to lean a little bit further into the 121 update. Pretty basic. Uh, obviously, we got light in here so the sugarcane can continue growing. Sugarcane grows. Observer sees it, knocks all the sugarcane down. The path blocks allow the sugar, the remaining sugarcane to be picked up, um, even though it goes further than a block. Uh, so this is completely lossless. I have tested it several times, uh, and I don't lose any sugarcane at all. All right, so that is the sugarcane farm completed. This is my automatic paper nader. Um, just in the time that it took me to build this, I got four, almost four stacks of paper. So that's solid right there. Super solid. Let's nab all of that. We can make plenty of rockets. All right. We got the sugarcane farm built. We got, it's not even just a sugarcane farm. It's an automatic paper, paper -ficator. That's what I'm going to call it. The automatic paper -ficator. We got that built. And oh my god, we have more rockets than I'll probably need in a long time. That's probably a lie. I use a lot of rockets. Anyways, let's go check it out. Let's see what it looks like from a distance. Um, I like it. It's not the best, but, you know. Then again, I'm not the best builder, so I'm pretty happy with what I was able to come up with. 
Uh, that's it right there. Boom. It's kind of like a like a Viking style longhouse. I think a lot of the builds I do in this area are gonna be like Viking esque. Um, I really love this style of roof. I really love this style of roof. The this this style of roof is meant for a one block center, and I had to modify it for the two block center, but I think it'll work. I think it'll be fine. And then if we just AFK here, we'll get paper. Anyways, moving on to the next build. All right, and I'm fairly certain this will be enough room. We I don't need a whole lot of villagers, right? So I don't need a crazy, big, elaborate, exaggerated trading hall. I just want one that'll allow me to infect and cure as I need without having to move the villagers and the I know the exact design I'm going for with that. So we've already built Morting's Iron Farm. Now we're building his trading hall. Uh, I think, honestly, that's the coolest trading hall on the internet. But it's super simple, super easy to make. Doesn't really take a whole lot of resources. Okay, so what I'm thinking is have kind of like a U-shaped situation going on. So we're going to need three different modules, pretty much. We're going to have to build this three different times. Um, one really long going down the length of this side right here one uh let's stop it probably like right there let's use this as a cutoff line so we're gonna have one going this way one right here and one right here going this way to make kind of like a u-shaped trading center i think that'll work so basically, the villager's going to stand right here. Job block's going to be right here. Uh, we're going to have a space in the middle in between each villager for them to gossip. Um, there's going to be a zombie walking up here. We're going to need three zombies. We need one for each module. Um, then there's going to be water and a trap door. Uh, above the villager with a lever you flick the lever the water comes down and the villager floats up the zombie attacks villager uh, zombie villager floats down and you close the trap door and disinfect from there it's real easy real simple i think it's the probably the coolest trading hall design that i've ever seen yeah i'll see you guys whenever it's done or ready to move some villagers in all right, so we got the basic shape of this laid out. Um, I don't know if I like the stone brick, but I'm going to go with it. Anyways, villagers are going to be right here. Job blocks uh, right here. They're going to be kept in. There's going to be levers right here. There's going to be trap doors right here. It's going to be really cool. And yeah, then on top of these, there's going to be a little chamber for the zombie. When we flip the lever, the villagers float up, get, a, get infected by the zombie. The zombie villager floats down, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. We cure it, and it's super easy. We don't have to move the villagers. But we are going to have to move the villagers in here which may or may not present a problem. Good thing I have a data pack installed that allows me to put leads on villagers.
And that's pretty much how it's gonna go. Okay, that's most of the shepherds. We only have one more shepherd, but I need to let these guys... What are you doing here? Yeah, yeah, so we'll leave these in here until we get enough villagers to fill this up right here. We just gotta wait here for more villagers, honestly. But while we're doing that, I can get these guys set up with some trades that I actually want them to have. I want them to be like this guy and have two wool trades. Yeah, I'm going to sit here and play around with the villagers a little bit. And I will see you guys when I have everything set up the way I like it. Yesterday, I got this automatic paperficator built. It's doing fantastic um and then i spent a little bit of time gathering some resources for my next farm why can't i jump up here fill this area in and i'm building a wool farm right here for the 15 colors of wool i'm gonna build a separate thing uh, for white wool, it's going to be fantastic. I figured it out this morning. It's beautiful. And the thing that allows it to run is another auto crafter. Yep, that's right. We're building an automatic woolificator machine. This one, however, is going to have 15 sheep, all of each color, feeding into an item sorter that's going to be right here. So let's bang that item sorter out real quick. We're going to need our building blocks. Ooh, we might need to go get some more redstone from the mob farm, but we'll deal with that. We're going to need 45 double chests um, and 45 hoppers to start off with, as well as the comparators, redstone torches, and repeaters. The repeaters. These, these, right here. These. Yeah, definitely ended up needing a lot more chests. I forgot that I was making double chests. So when I did the math for how much I needed, I just did 15 chests times 3, because I was stacking them 3 high. Um, I should have done 30 times 3. I actually needed 90 chests. So, yeah. Off to a great start. All right, that's the that's pretty much the basics of the item sorter done. Now we just gotta add the top hoppers and the actual wool farm itself. So to do that, we're gonna come over here on the chests and we're gonna take these hoppers. We're gonna shift click right into the side of the comparator, not the top, the side, just like that. And this is pretty much it. Uh, the sheep are going to go in there. They're going to get dyed. The observer is going to read the grass block. Then power the dispenser, which is going to be loaded with shears. And therefore, shearing the sheep. That is the wool farm complete. All we got to do is get the sheep in here and then dye them. Now, as you guys can see right here, I have been working on breeding some sheep. I have not dyed them yet, but I did take time to collect all 15 colors of dye. Uh, too many, too many, too many, no. Uh, I think I have more than 15 sheep. <laughs> all right, let's see if we can get these guys in one at a time. Come on, fella. You can go in there. Get in there. Get in there. There's one.
last one. All right, now we have all the sheep in here, all all died, and all shears and all the dispensers. Now all we have to do is come down here. And there we go, it should start picking everything up, no problem. And everything should get funneled down to this chest right here, hopefully. It's definitely getting funneled down to the right chest. We do actually need that comparator there. All right, and that's pretty much done. All we gotta do is decorate the outside, the quickest wool farm you've ever seen. And everything is working. Everything's getting funneled down to this chest just like it should. Which means as soon as we have 41 of each color in here, we can throw them in the item filter. And then everything will go into its own chest after that. And with this at this rate, I don't think it'll be very long. All right, that's basically done. I just got to throw the roof on it. Um, and don't worry, the grass will still grow because I have lanterns in there. Um, now, we're going to start working on the white wool, which I'm doing a little bit differently. I'm actually going to use the infinite string glitch as well as an auto crafter. So basically, it's going to be producing string. The string is going to get put into the auto crafter. Auto crafter is going to craft white wool. All right. Real easy peasy. We do comparator there. Comparator there. Composter there. Solid block. Redstone. Repeater. Solid block. Just like that. All right. Let's just check and make sure that both trap doors are controlled by this lever right here they're both open and if we flick the lever now they're both closed all right perfect let's go back down here flip the lever again jump over here do, do, do. then we're gonna need two water buckets one right there and one right there okay then we need our Tripwire and string. Tripwire hooks there. String. String. There we go. And now, if we flick this lever, we should be able to hear it duplicating the string. But let's take all of these. And... There we go. It's working. And here is our white wool generator. All right. And that is both of our wool generators. Super quick, super easy. Both of them are, really. Um, especially that one. That one is a beaut. We've been, it's been running for about three minutes. And we have a stack and a half of white wool. We're actually going to get a lot more. Because one of those hoppers up there is full. So we're going to let that empty out. You don't want it to clog up. So you only want to run it for a couple minutes at a time. But the beautiful thing about that is that it only takes a couple minutes. And that's, I mean, like the general shape. We're going to do uh, pillars on the corners right there. Um, yeah. So now it doesn't matter what color wool we need. We always have it. Such a beautiful thing. And it's still going. After three minutes, it's going to give us probably three full stacks of wool. This it, It's insane. It's insane. All right. We got this whole thing sorted. Every every color has a home. 
and all the brown every color gets sorted into its own box into its own chest okay and then the brown will always end up all the way down here while the white is in here and then whenever we need more white wool all we do is turn this on and in just a second it produ it starts producing white wool this is our wool factory i'm gonna go ahead and get everything decorated and looking nice actually the reason i needed this wool farm is because wait a minute it's because i needed more beds so let's get some beds slapped down let's get some more beds slapped down in our villager breeder so that way our villagers can make some more babies I hope you guys enjoyed episode two of my hardcore survival world. Uh, let's get into the the details of this wolf farm. Shall we? First of all, we have a trespasser. Nah, -uh. Go away. Anyways, banners indicate what wool is where, obviously. And it, and it works. It really works. I like it. Anyways, this beaut of a machine is my white wool generator. You just flick this lever. That clicking means it's working. And then it just starts producing white wool. It's such a beautiful thing. Let's go take a look at the inside. Let's look at the guts of this building. I even added a little awning area. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Uh, probably just some like path um, and gravel. Make it, worn, make it look worn down and stuff. We come up here and we have access to filling up all of our dispensers. Um, so easy access to the dispensers and we even put a little bit of decor. Got a little bit of decor, some extra storage. You know, it's just gonna be shears up here. Um, this is the string duplicator, which funnels into an auto crafter, which crafts white wool, which is the heart of our white wool generator and that's pretty much it for up here moving on we have the sugarcane farm super easy obviously it's your typical sugarcane farm has path blocks in the middle right there so nothing gets stuck and basically just brings the sugarcane over to a auto crafter which is right there and then crafts paper and then we get to move on to the rest of the builds you can kind of see it you can kind of see it you can kind of see the corner of it let's go check it out you can see it from here i have built another mortings design uh this trading hall is designed by more tings for players like me who are lazy and don't like moving villagers so the way this works is you flick this lever villager will float up get infected and then he floats back down hello zombie boy and you just throw that and grab your golden apple and boom wait a couple minutes and he will be back to his normal state with some discounted prices super cool i absolutely love this design it's really easy to uh, to throw together it doesn't take a whole lot of resources at all and it kind of looks nice the 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 bones the skeleton of this design was designed by mortings everything else was done by me Moving on. Another thing we did in this episode, we did it in the time lapse, is we built this mob farm. Uh, just your typical mob farm that really everybody builds. Enchantment setup. We were here for like six hours during that gameplay. Rerolling this enchantment table. I was having terrible luck with enchantments, but I finally got it. And our very last thing we have to show off. You can kind of see it peeking up right over there. 
this is my favorite thing that I have built in a long time. In a long time. Now, backstory, I am a more of a a more of a technical player. I like ex exploring. I like building, you know, big complicated redstone machines. I like building farms. I like automating stuff. So I don't build houses very often or structures. This is the first house that I've built in a long time. And I think it's the best house that I've ever built in my time playing Minecraft ever. If you guys are around in my live stream world, you'll see that I don't build houses. I'm approaching day 1000 in that world and I'm still sleeping outside. But anyways, let's go check out after we collect this gunpowder. All right, gunpowder collected. Let's go check out our house. I've done a little bit of texturing. I'm not sure if I like the diorite right there, but I don't have really anything else to texture this with that I'm aware of. So maybe you guys can give me some ideas in the comments. Put them down below in the comments and I will try them out. You can see I have the balcony right here. I haven't done my enchantment tower yet. This is going to be the enchantment tower. But let's start from the very beginning and go in the front door. We haven't added doors yet. We and we haven't done any interior design for this just yet we're gonna do that in the next episode so hopefully you guys check that out do not miss that it's gonna be a lot of fun i originally thought about putting like a fireplace here but i i, I don't know what i want to put here now i don't know i might actually just like do windows all right here i'm not 100 percent sure but moving on upstairs is also an empty room um, and we still have to add the third, like the attic. We're going to add an attic and use that for storage. Um, coming out here is the balcony. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing is completely free. Liking is completely free. And commenting is completely free. And you can change your mind whenever you want to. Okay, bye.